<laughs> yeah, I'm really good. Thank you so much for joining me here today on no Tea worries. with Jules. How are we having your tea today? Today we are having English breakfast with milk. Mm -hmm. Now I have quite a background with tea actually. Tell me. Told you about. <gasps> good. My mum's obsessed with tea. She drinks like eight cups of tea a day and I love her there already. is a tea cup in every room, an empty dirty one, and there is at least two in the car every single day without fail. And a habit that I've got into, because she still does this all the time, is you take your tea into the car but before you get it into the car with all your bags and everything, you've opened the door and you put it on top of the roof. So you pile all your bags in yes. and then you close the door and you take off and there goes the tea. And you're like, where's my tea gone? Like a teacup, like a ceramic. Just a ceramic, normal China teacup. So you guys go through So tea we go cups. through so many teacups and oh, that's wow. my background is, with tea. Does she drink English breakfast as well? Is that her tea of She choice? drinks Roy Boss yes. or Sri Lankan tea, but mm -hmm. it used to be English breakfast until she just discovered that caffeine was not good for her. So, right. um, so now we're all about the Roy Boss. Okay. Yeah. Now, Kate, I've known you for a little while now. We'll tell the story later of how we met. But you are currently a Maya Ambassador. You're an MTV VJ. Yep. You are a motorbike rider. You're one of the coolest people I've ever met, let's be honest. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know if that's in your job description, but yes, I'm going to put is, it in there. Yes, it is. And I signed the contract. <laughs> Make sure you're cool without people knowing or feeling like you're too cool. Tick. Done. <laughs> You've also been on a number of television shows, one of which you co-produced on the National Ge Geographic People Channel, which saw you a model on a motor motorbike going across the country and doing all sorts of fun things. It's a random mixed bag when you it put it is. like that. People must just think, what does she do? <laughs> Tell me, take me back to little, little baby Kate and where you grew up and how you grew up. So I was born in Canada. In oh, a little, you? Yeah, huh. in a little skiing village called Jasper. And my dad was Canadian. He was a skier and a pilot. And my mum was Australian, so she'd come over and they'd fallen in love and she got pregnant. And um, and so they had me there and I was probably like one year old when I left with dad and mum. Mm -hmm. We flew to Cairns and I think my, my dad in Cairns, he had an ice selling business. Not ice as in the really bad in drug Cairns. that we're having a okay. couple of years right now. As in like the stuff you put in your drink. Gotcha. Um, and, no, dad isn't a drug lord. Um, <laughs> and so mum was just looking after us and then we, mum's family's in Melbourne. So I had my brother moved down to Melbourne when we were like four. And then my parents split up because um, my dad decided that Melbourne was too cold because he's from Canada and logically Melbourne is too cold when you come from Canada. Right, Had to makes sense. Hands. Yeah. So they split up and my brother and I went to school in Melbourne and grew up in Melbourne around Bayside um, kind of area. So you stayed in Melbourne, you did all your schooling there right up until yeah. high school. Were you rebellious? Were you a good little angel? Uh, that, I don't know if that's a good question. I think I was okay. Primary school was all, all right. You know, I guess it was there was ups and downs because my parents had separated, so I think that affected me when I was a little girl. Mm. And then my mum was remarrying as well. So I think when you're little and you're still having trouble understanding all that kind of stuff, you just, you're a bit angry. So yeah. maybe as a kid I was a little bit angry. Because um, what age were you when they decided to like split? Like five. Okay. So I think that's probably the time when you're just, you're just starting to go into school yeah. and growing up a little bit more. So, But how did that affect you, do you think? It affected me a lot. I think that um, I was just, just starting to get into school then and um, I guess you're, you're socialising more and with other families and stuff like that. So I think it's always a bit different when your family is different to other families. But I think at the same time, you know, a lot of parents were starting to separate around then too. And I think that... I, you know, now looking back on it, um, they should not have stayed together anyway, irrelevant of whether it's for the kids or not. I think mm. that it's really important that your parents are happy doing whatever it is that they're doing rather than doing something for you, mm -hmm. and which makes them unhappy, which in turn will make the family unhappy and that will make you unhappy. So <laughs> I think that it was a good thing that they did split and, you know, that kind of stuff is character building as well. And your relationship with them now, is it... 
Is it all good? Yeah, yeah, it's good. So then my mum remarried when I was about eight. So then I um, I adopted like three stepsisters. Wow. So that was like an expansion to a smallish Brady Bunch mm-hmm. kind of. And everyone moved in together? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And they were quite a bit older. So that was a real learning curve too because mm. um, – we, and he was, and my new stepdad was very strict and he had a lot of manners and what not to teach us, and um, which I hated. I mm-hmm. wasn't being used to talk manners. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean I have to how I hold my nuts and fork? I don't care. <laughs> Who are you to tell me? Oh, yeah, that would be hard. It was Just weird. someone coming in and yeah. laying down the law. I know, so I think that really pissed me off too. But um, mm. but now, but now you've got great manners. Now I've got really good manners, <laughs> so you wouldn't always know it, but they're back there somewhere. Um, <laughs> so and I remember we'd sit at the dinner table, and um, I'd be like, oh, no, I don't care about your manners. And he would say, well, when you're having dinner with the Queen, you will thank me. And I'm yet to have dinner with the Queen, but I do thank him for that. <laughs> <laughs> you're growing up, you're in Melbourne. Tell me about your dreams and aspirations. Did you always know that you wanted to go into what you're doing now? Well, I mum was a model when she was younger before oh, she wow. had us. Yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Um, so I would look back on her modelling photos and just think, wow, they're, they're so cool. And she was such a babe too, like yeah. next level. What sort level. of modelling did she do? A lot of sports girl kind of stuff yeah. in Australia. But she was quite shy, so um, she... I think being in front of the camera for her and, you know, going to all the castings and probably all the rejection and um, it's, a, it's it can be a tough gig if you're mm. not really, if you're not made for it, mm-hmm. you don't really want it, then, yeah. Um, then yeah, it can weigh you down. I guess as every little girl kind of wants somewhere deep inside or not very deep inside wants to be a model, you know, they play with Barbies and yeah. dolls and all that kind of stuff. So I think that... I probably always wanted to be a model from from a young age. Were you a typical girl like that? Not really. I think my favourite toy was Thomas the Tank Engine for a very long time mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also didn't mind a mermaid Barbie, you know, every now and then. Every now mm-hmm. and then I would throw in a little mermaid or a My Little Pony too. I yeah. loved horses. Mm-hmm. And so the modelling thing kind of, you got, got stung by the modelling thing. Did you then pursue it or did it pursue you? Well, I when I was 16 and I was in high school, I went to an all-girls um, Anglican school in Caulfield. Um, a group of friends and I, a well, group of friends, entered me into this competition called Search for a Supermodel, and oh, um, yeah. it was like one. It was the first televised uh, modeling competition yeah. like what we have now. Yeah. You know, with Next Top Model, except our series was really nice. They were really, you know, caring and nurturing, and yeah. it wasn't like let's make this poor 14 year old fight with this poor 14 year old mm-hmm. and let's see who we can make cry and um and let's cause some hoo-ha and um all that kind of jazz it was just a more nurturing kind of in entrance into the industry mm-hmm. we had people uh, like nicole trumpio was in my year and yep. Gemma ward oh and, wow yeah yeah so there were some some big names and after that oh, so i was about 15 or 16 and then i went in back to school and then just started continuing modelling on the side mm-hmm. when I could. And then, was that a good opportunity for you to meet people and to get yeah, started in the industry? It taught me about working at kind of a young age with different people. So it was a really different experience. It's not like going to the bakery mm-hmm. or Macca's and mm-hmm. working there. It's like you, you have to grow up pretty quickly. It's a very because, adult world. Yeah, yeah, you have to deal with mm-hmm. adults and, you know, you're putting in, putting compromising situations mm-hmm. and you have to... Um, you have to get to locations and you have to be doing different things that a lot of people don't really understand. So everything from grooming to like having the right underwear mm-hmm. to like making it on time to locations and to having you know hair colour and doing work for free and all that kind of stuff that nobody else really gets unless you're in the industry. Yep. But because my mum was a model, she got that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy it when you were doing it? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. I really loved it. But it really built my character as well. I had to deal with lots of different different people and you have to make a lot of different people happy um, and you just have to work with situations differently. I'm on the other side of it, I'm not a model and but I've worked with models and there is such a difference between a good 
and a not so good model. It makes or breaks the day. No yeah. pressure, it really does. Yeah. It's like when you have a good model, you can just bang out those shots mm. and it's every, everything just works. It's, it's a different type of work to other work that is also hard work. It's just it's just different. Um, but the pressures that go along with it too, so, you know, body image and, mm. like, why didn't I get that job? Why mm -hmm. did they say no? They, there's never any feedback. Mm -hmm. there's, because it is all about how you look. That's the end yeah, of the that's day. It. That and is your business job. And yep. people take it personally and yep. they get emotionally attached. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that. You just have to detach yourself and say, well, I wasn't right for their brand for mm -hmm. that market, so that's why I didn't get the gig. I mean, yeah. that's, that's it. And have you always had this look? Short hair, blonde. No, no, I had long hair about, I reckon it'd be about five years mm -hmm. ago. And I, I always wanted to cut my hair off. And then I got this job with Tony and Guy, and it was an international campaign. And they said, we'll pay you a ridiculous amount of money if you'll cut your hair off. And so I said, yes. <laughs> so did my agency. And, um, so then they cut it into this like horrendous mullet oh, no. and I was like, well, I'm just going to have to chop it off. <laughs> so I was able to cut it into a little pixie cut and, mm -hmm. um, and then I just loved it. I don't think I'll ever go long again. It's just not, it's not really me anymore. I'll it have really to do something you. different, mm -hmm. but for the time being, it's, it's good short. I like it short. I saw you recently in, in a Maya show with the blonde long wig that they put on you. And I that mean, wasn't look, a wig. That oh, was extensions. Oh, was it? And I was looking in the mirror because my hairdresser, James, from Kevin Murphy, who yeah. um, did it for the show, who's unbelievable, he'd made it so that I couldn't, even me, in the mirror, I couldn't find where my hair ended and where this extension started. Isn't it, that it, bizarre? It looked amazing. It, it did look real. But, you know, long blonde, it's just there's so many of them out there. I yeah. think that it's important to to have your own style and something unique about you because mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, you've got to be your own character and whatever makes you the best character you can be, then I think enjoy it to the full. I think that's one thing that's definitely stuck with me when I met you because I was very intimidated when I met you. Oh, really? <laughs> I was. Let's talk about the whole MTV thing and how you got into that. We were auditioning at the same time. Right, okay, that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, because there was a show called MTV Style Me. I just had my baby, first baby, and they called me to come in for an audition to be the stylist in this show. And I went in thinking that there's no way. I, I've never done TV before. I don't know what I'm doing. I, there's no way. But I'll go. It'll be a fun day. Yeah. And then I said when I was there, who, who else is going for this? And they said, oh, we've got a model. And we've got some bloggers. And I was like, well, they're going to get the job. Oh, no. And then it turned out that... It's an awkward moment, Kay. I got the job, so... <laughs> I yeah. And then I remember the first day that we all kind of started with MTV. You got the MTV VJ role, which suits you down to the ground. I could never be that cool and be VJ and do that. And then we, we, we met that day. I remember we had a photo shoot together for MTV and yeah. sitting in the Cadillac and right. <laughs> doing all that. And I was like, what am I doing here? This is Kate Peck. She's like an Amazon beautiful, cool motorbike riding chick and I'm like some daggy whatever I'm trying to do. I was so scared. But anyway, my point is you've kept that but you've also kept your individuality in, in how you look in an industry where it is easy to be a clone and, and to be, you know, looking like everybody else. Shit, I'll take you everywhere. With <laughs> Credit to you. No, honestly, no, that's, that's a, real, a real thing. Are you, you going to get into management? Because that sounds like what I need to get. I'm a sell. <laughs> there's business and there's nice and you can combine the two. I, I really think that it's possible to to yeah. remain a good person in, in this industry. Oh, totally. I can't be any other way, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I tried to be a bitch. I wish I could be more <laughs> of a bitch because <laughs> then, I don't know, maybe I'd get, like, a lot of respect or something. But no. I just I just can't. I'm too much of a please-like-me person. Um, and, you know, my mum taught me that to treat people as you'd like to be mm -hmm. treated. It's nice to be able to lay down the law sometimes and just be like, no you know, if you, um, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it this way, which, you know, when the time is right, you can do yep. that. 
but um, I don't have a hard edge like that and I don't think I ever will and I don't think I want one. Yeah, I've gotten this far without it. Yeah, and you know, yeah. when I meet people like you, for instance, that they're really sweet, they're down to earth, they've got something good to say, you know, they genuinely care about you, um, they're, they're not... Um, they're not threatened by you. They just are comfortable and they exist in their own mm -hmm. and um, they're not insecure and they don't project any of that onto you. Mm -hmm. Then they're the ones that you remember and they're the ones you want to hang out with yep. at a later date. So MTV. Yeah. My gosh, what an awesome company to be a part of. I couldn't believe that I was a part of it. Yeah, it's pretty cool, It's isn't so it? fun. It's so yeah. international and you get to do so many things. Can yeah. you tell me about some of the fun things you've done with MTV? The biggest thing, actually, in the entire time that I've been there would be uh, when I was flying over to New York to interview um, Stevie Wonder and Alicia Keys wow. and Will I Am. Were you nervous? Yeah, I was. I was terrified. But, you know, I don't know about you, but I still get nervous before everything. What do you do about that? Is it self-talk or is it...? I think... Um, it's experience. Yep. A lot of it is experience. Mm -hmm. So, like, if for anyone who does want to get into TV presenting or whatever, it's just like just doing it again and again and again and again and doing it for free and doing it as mm -hmm. much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And just, to, just so you can feel comfortable in that environment. I can't be drunk. You know how some <laughs> presenters can go out there oh, and, like, host things and have wines yep. and champagne? That just doesn't work out for me. So. Have you tried? I've tried. <laughs> No, you go. Disaster. Disaster. <laughs> so I feel like your, your mind needs to be clear mm -hmm. and you um, just realise that you're not, like, solving world problems. That's Good. it. You know, I'm not curing poverty here. <laughs> I'm interviewing Ariana Grande or whatever. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So I think perspective is important too. That's so true. Mm. Not saving the whales. Exactly. <laughs> I can't believe that you, this tiny little person gets on these massive motorbikes and you just like crank it and go yeah it's nothing in the world gives me the sensation that riding a motorcycle gives me it's just like it's just freedom and escapism and um and it's just something that when you when you chat to other motorcycle riders you connect on this another level it's yeah. just like I don't know what it is about it, but I just get a rush and I love the community. I just, just, just everything about it. Just, I just feel good on a bike. I would 100% crash in my first, like, second. Well, if you're not falling, you're not learning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. And if you're not dying, <laughs> you're, you're living. Still, you're living. <laughs> Good advice. Good right advice. Here you heard it first. One, what, motorcycling 101. <laughs> but yeah, it's been good because I can branch out like with my TV series with Nat Geo people. Um, and so that was an adventure TV series called A Model Adventure. Mm -hmm. And we did that four episodes around Australia. So I did an off-road car rally where I navigated um, a truck in Kalgoorlie. And we won, which was amazing. And then I did a three-day canyoning expedition in Blue Mountains. And then we did a sailing race. And then I did a jungle triathlon in um, far north Queensland. So that is, that's another side of me. And I get to kind of, um, I get to immerse myself in all the adventure and um, just something different that takes me away from... The glamour. The, the glitz and the yeah. glam that is the TV industry mm -hmm. and Sydney and superficial things. Mm -hmm. and It's nice just to get dirty. And yeah. Do you have a preference? Where would you rather be? Oh, I don't. I want to stick with all of them. Yeah, so I love it all. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I've got the Myra Ambassador role as well, so that's pure fashion. Yeah. Then I've got MTV, which is entertainment and um, music. And... I've got my motorcycle stuff too and my adventure stuff and I want to do it all and mm -hmm. I and people are kind of like well you're gonna have to choose one I'm like well I don't want to yeah you Why don't have to must I? yeah I know you're a busy busy girl and you know it's hard to fit in all the things you do into life far less keeping up with family friends you know everything that everything else that's going on do you have a good base of people around you that you can call on for Cups of tea, times on the couch, just chill out zones. One thing I really believe in is that life is too short to be hanging out with losers. You need to just get rid of anyone who's sapping you dry mm -hmm. and is not giving you anything because life is too short. If you hang out with these 
idiots that are sucking sucking the good bits out of you so you can't go out there and pursue what you want to do then you know you've only got yourself to blame basically mm -hmm. so i think that how would you get how would you get around that like how do you identify that someone is bad for you and then remove yourself or them from the situation what would be your strategy it's hard but i've i don't know cold just, turkey yeah, or just just slowly, you know, just slowly distance Pull yourself. Back. That's it. You just got to slowly distance yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you stop responding to them constantly or feeding their problem, you mm -hmm. know, if they if they're sucking you dry and they're constantly texting you and making you feel bad, I think mm. that's really hard to get around. Mm -hmm. You just have to you just have to be you just have to think of yourself sometimes. And when you are a caring person like yourself, I've seen you care. I've seen you at so many different events and you've always got somebody who's not in the industry with you as your friend, you're taking them along for the event or with yeah. the right, you, sh you kind of share the the experience and you share yeah. the love. I see how much you care for people and I think it's just beautiful. But being a busy person, it's it can be, you can just work all the time, 24 seven. I know that sometimes I just have to go, okay, I need to just put my computer down right now. I, I can do this later. Do you have a, a strategy, I guess, or, some way of doing that's just stopping not stopping working rejuvenating and getting your energy back oh, i like to go to the gym a lot mm -hmm. i think my odd hobby of motorcycling helps mm -hmm. and just a just a day on yourself solo mm -hmm. you know where you can just read the paper just unload your mind because it's often the mind clutter as well that you can you can better manage your time will be less stressed if you're clear mm -hmm. okay can i ask you like a weird question and this is so off topic but <laughs> i'm going to talk about you being an ambassador for maya you do a lot of catwalking right yeah i i always think what is that model thinking about <laughs> their face is so serious and so focused are you just thinking i just need to get from here to there without falling you, like what is happening i love it it's so much fun to get out there and you're just like i am hot shit <laughs> right now and that's pretty much it like you feel good if Dude. you can walk properly that's mm -hmm. it see some of the girls really struggle in high heels yeah. walking to a strong pace yeah or whatever is required of them or they just hate being on the runway because mm -hmm. i love it you yeah, have a good walk you have a really good fierce walk well i like thanks. it I, I just love it so much and you're good in heels that helps some of them might be a little bit hungry some of them might be but you know a lot of them aren't hungry but some of them might be um <laughs> some of them could be uncomfortable because mm -hmm. some of the stuff we have to wear is just ridiculous sometimes <laughs> have you ever had a near miss like have you ever fallen yeah yeah have you one of my first photo of uh, first fashion shows ever was with wayne cooper and yeah. paris hilton was in the show yeah and um we it was in the bmw edge in federation square in melbourne and the, what it is is like ugh, 60 steps or something that are really steep but they're all different sizes and um there's no handrail and we're in six inch terry biviano heels and this is like the second time i've ever walked in heels and so i must have got down three steps and just slid and the, oh, it was like no. an auditorium this whole auditorium has gone <gasps> And so I just had to get back up and keep walking. And that'll be fine. And that's your first and only fall? Pretty much. Good. Yeah. Kate, it has been so nice to talk to you. I feel like I, I know you even better now. Oh, good. There's so many things Let's to you. Let's do it again. Let's do it again.